Coming up on DTNS, the Libra Association insists it's still viable. Apple TV comes to Roku. You heard that right. And Google announces the Pixel 4 and more. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, October 15th, 2019 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And, oh my God, there's no studio feline. In uh, lovely, illuminated Paris, I'm Patrick Beja. And uh, I'm Roger Chang, the show's producer. Yes, uh, Sarah out sick today, uh, but we apologize for that. Uh, but we have been having a great time on Good Day Internet. Uh, Patrick has been evaluating my French. Uh, we talked a lot about <laughs> Fortnite and how Epic got away with what they got away with uh, this weekend. Uh, we'll tell you a, a tiny bit about that here in a second. But if you want that full expanded discussion, you got to check out Good Day Internet at patreon.com slash DTNS. All right, let's start with a few tech things you should know. AMC Theaters launched an on-demand video store in the United States. AMC Theaters On Demand. It'll make 2,000 films from major U.S. studios available for purchase or rental. AMC Stubbs members, that's their loyalty program, who use their first transaction to buy or rent a movie from Lionsgate or Paramount Pictures can choose an additional three movies from a selection of that studio's films. It's a little promotion. Uh, you can use AMC Theaters On Demand at amctheaters.com, the AMC Theaters mobile app, on a Roku and on some smart TVs with more services and devices to be added in the near future. Welcome to 2008. <laughs> after, after taking the Fortnite game down for a couple of days after an asteroid destroyed the map in game, Fortnite Chapter 2 has launched. It features, as expected, a new map and new skins, as well as new ways to level. Sony will launch its 360 reality audio technology later this year uh, for Amazon Music HD, Deezer, Tidal, and Nugs.net. The format places elements of a music track around the listener in a virtual sphere, kind of surrounding them with sound. Uh, Sony says about a thousand songs will be available at launch, including tracks from Pharrell, Bob Dylan, and Billy Joel, with live performances from Charlie XCX and Codaline. Amazon Echo Studio will support 360 reality audio, uh, with other speakers requiring a Sony decoder, and it also works with most headphones if you just want to plug it in that way. All right, let's uh, follow up on something that happened kind of at the end of last week after we finished DTNS, Patrick. Indeed, uh, late Friday, Blizzard changed its position on punishing Hearthstone competitor Ning Blitzchung, uh, Blitzchung Chung. Um, he was, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the text is confusing me, um, for saying a Hong Kong protest movement slogan during a post-game interview. So he said something pro-Hong Kong and then was punished for it. Blitzchung's outright ban has been reduced to a six-month suspension. Uh, it was a one-month ban and he will, a uh, one-year ban that was transformed into six months uh, suspension and he will now get to keep his prize money. The two casters who interviewed him had their firings changed to six months suspensions as well. President, uh, Blizzard President J. Allen Bragg that we want to keep focused on the game and claimed the specific views expressed were not at issue and relationships in China had no influence on the decision. Uh, mixed reactions to uh, to, to this uh, change. Uh, a lot of people, and I, and I think fairly so, saying, well, okay, at least... They they took a second look, uh, and and let uh, Blitzchung keep his money. Uh, those are the positives out of it. But uh, quite a few people also saying this is still not okay with them that they punished him at all for that. Uh, Blizzard trying to walk the line of saying it's not because China told us to. It's because we want the focus to be on the game, and he was saying something that turned the focus away from the game. Yeah, which is a difficult. Uh, claim to accept. The, the the problem is the language I felt of the um, communication didn't feel very genuine. And mm. I should add that I used to work for Blizzard, worked there for five years, so keep that in mind. Um, but it didn't feel very genuine when sincerity was what was, what was needed uh, in that instance, in my opinion. And they made it sound 
like he was trying to uh, tick all the boxes about corporate values and uh, defending those values in a situation which is clearly difficult for them. So it didn't feel very uh, appropriate for the situation. Um, and the claim that China had nothing to do with it is impossible to believe. Uh, the, yeah. the severity and the swiftness of the uh, initial punishment was so strong that even if it wasn't like they directly thought, oh, do you think China would like it? I mean, it it obviously influenced them so that, or at least it, it's difficult to believe it didn't. That being said, mm -hmm. th that being said, I think the current state of the uh, punishment feels more uh, appropriate. And if they had done that to begin with, I think people would have had a lot less of a problem with it. But of course, it's a, a second try. I think the, the way, uh, if you want to look at it with a little bit of genuine positivity, um, Blitzchung will be able to compete in the next round of Grandmasters next year. He might choose not to, but if he does, it will mean that with all of this focus and his pro Hong Kong stance, he will still be competing in the competition next year and the visibility will be quite strong. So I think in that sense, um, I'm understanding it as a way to uh, uh, split the difference and still giving him the opportunity to be visible, which is... I'm guessing if they were to, if they wanted to please China 100%, they might not have wanted this to happen. But we'll, well uh, there's so much going on here. I mean, Brack wrote, I want to be clear, our relationship in China had no influence on our decision. BS. I'm sorry. I agree, yeah, with, you. That I is... agree with you 100%. Uh, to, if he had said, I want to be clear, uh, China does not get to decide what happens with, with Blitzchung, I, I'd probably be okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, you have to take into account what's going on in China and your market and everything, but you're the you're the one who makes the final decision. Okay, fair. But to try to get me to believe our relationships had no influence, this didn't happen this fast without influence being felt. Maybe, maybe, maybe Xi Jinping didn't pick up the phone and call Blizzard immediately and say, you know, fire that guy. Uh, but it, they didn't have to. No one from the Chinese government had to reach out. That's not how this works. You know that that is going to get you in trouble and you do something to head off any repercussions, which is why Blizzard acted too fast, in my opinion. And this is Brack saying, we acted too fast he doesn't say because we were scared, uh, yeah. which is what I think. And and that's why they overreacted and, and punished him too harshly. And now they're trying to dial it back. But I, I still, you know, yeah, you can. Uh, we we had one of uh, the DTNS listeners point out that, you know, there's things like Colin Kaepernick in the U.S. where speaking out has has gotten him sort of shadow banned from the NFL. But even that was not as quick and as uh, very much related to exactly what was happening as this. And, and I think that has everything to do with the fact that it was about China. And because it's such a hot button issue, everyone knows China is intolerant of any kind of expression of support of Hong Kong. The NBA thing had already happened at that point. Uh, and so they, they were extra sensitive to it. And, and of course they reacted because of it. It might be that the Asian team was the one that made the decision and that the sure. global team is the one that even then you can't claim uh, it had nothing to do with it. That's no, I'm sorry. All right. Last week, privacy advocates warned that a note in iOS 13 mentioned that the Safari browser uses Chinese company Tencent's safe browsing system, along with Google's safe browsing program, in order to warn about malicious web pages. Now, both these systems may log IP addresses in the process. Apple says that the safe browsing providers send a list to the Safari browser, which never shares the actual URL you visit with the safe browsing provider, whether it's Tencent or Google. The list is only received from Tencent on a phone if that phone's region code is set to mainland China. Otherwise, it's from Google. Now, Johns Hopkins cryptographer Matthew Green says that while Google uses hashes for URL matching, sometimes Safari may ask Google for more matching hashes, which could reveal the IP address to Google. And Apple didn't say anything about the IP address. So that 
part is true. It's unknown how Tencent handles requests, but it may do the same. But it comes down to whether you believe Apple. If Apple's saying the thing I want to hear, which is, no, we only use Tencent in mainland China where we can't use Google. And we only, and outside of mainland China, we use Google. And if there's a a problem with how the Google thing works, great, let's talk about it. But I think a lot of people were worried that, oh, I guess Safari is sending my browsing information to Tencent, and that's far from what's happening here. And that's been reported on, I think, rather poorly because of the frenzy probably around China and Apple. Um, when there are things that are genuinely concerning, we should call them out. It seems unlikely this is actually one of them. And they've been using Tencent as safe browsing in China for a while. Uh, this just mm. sort of came to light with the iOS 13 mention of it. Uh, and I think it was taken out of context. So on the one hand, I have my opinions about the, you know, the Blizzard China relationship, as you heard. This, I think, is a red herring. I don't think there's much going on here outside of the fact that you can't use a Google product in China. And you may think that, you know, Tencent uh, could be doing something nefarious with Chinese user stuff that that that's a for perfectly legitimate topic area for conversation. But I, that's not what a lot of the stories that I saw were trying to imply. And I don't think there's any chance, again, unless Apple's flat out lying and somebody can catch him in the lie, I, it sounds like Apple is not using this outside of mainland China. Right. I mean, there are many things we can discuss about the relationship between Apple and China, many of them sure. uh, problematic. Uh, but let's yeah let let's keep things a little bit factual and in this case yeah what you're about to say next sounds like it's not factual but it is <laughs> Roku announced ta 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 that Apple is launching an Apple TV app for most Rokus starting Tuesday the app will let users access purchased or rented TV shows and movies as well as programs from Apple TV channels like HBO and CBS All Access Apple TV Plus original shows will be available through the Roku app starting November 1st for $4.99 a month. Now, this answers a big question for me, which was if they're using Apple TV Plus as a loss leader on phones by giving you a year free, how are they expecting to make the money back if they're switching from being a devices revenue generating company to a services revenue generating company? This is one of the things I would expect to see. You're going to put Apple TV Plus out there as something to bring in people from other platforms. The way Apple Music went to Android Apple TV Plus apparently going to go to Roku, which makes sense. Roku is the set-top box maker that is most popular. Uh, it, it, it is well, Fire TV is pretty popular too, but I'm guessing they couldn't get Amazon on board for that. So, so Roku seems like a logical choice here. Yeah, and the the granddaddy of these uh, hell freezing over moments, which was literally the way it was described on stage, was iTunes coming to Windows. Yeah, right. Um, and that was also a move to get people hooked and to push the iPods and that ecosystem. And it worked out for Apple. So it's not that surprising they're doing it again. No, I was surprised I didn't hear about it earlier, I guess. But it mm. probably took some time to code, test, and get, get the platform to agree and all that. Although with Roku, they're pretty open. So platform agreeing was probably not a big deal there. Uh, and also over the weekend, Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, Stripe, eBay, Booking Holdings, and Mercado Pago all decided not to join the Libra Association, citing various regulatory compliance concerns. If you listen to Good Day Internet on Friday, you heard us reacting to the beginnings of the story breaking, especially Visa and MasterCard leaving. The association acknowledged that its plan for a June 2020 launch may be delayed <laughs> because of regulatory hurdles, but... 21 companies oh. still remain. What's that? 21 no, companies. You keep, keep going. Don't pay attention 20, to me. 21 companies still remain, including one payment processor, uh, the Netherlands Pay You. Those 21 members met Monday to ratify governing documents in Geneva, Switzerland, and elect the Libra Association board. We've talked about the Libra Association as existing, but it's really only existed as a concept until now. Now they have uh, bylaws and they have a board of directors. So now they are in fact a legal association. The five member board includes Facebook's David Marcus, as you might expect, as well as representatives from Andreessen Horowitz, cryptocurrency company Zapo, PayU, the Netherlands payment company, and microlending nonprofit Kiva. 
Uh, former PayPal Senior Director of Payments and Engineering, uh, Bertrand Perez, is a Libra Association member and was officially named COO and Interim Managing Director of the Association. The Libra Association also claimed that 1,500 organizations have expressed interest in joining and 180 of those meet criteria for membership. But Patrick, if you don't have Visa, MasterCard, and PayPal on board, uh, I, I'm not saying Libra Association can't navigate the regulatory issues and can't launch, but you need those companies back on board if you want to make this thing viable. If you want to make them viable as a uh having a bridge with the real world. Yeah. It could still be viable for internet payments, for lack of a better uh, term. And I'm pretty sure Facebook is going to keep soldiering on. But yes, those are, I mean, it's incredible that all of those uh, left at the same time and it chops off an entire part of uh, Libra's use case, use cases. It, they might come back, um, but certainly this is expressing uh, a lot of um, cold feetness at the idea of Libra when a few months ago there was uh, seemingly more enthusiasm. Yeah. And uh, this takes me from thinking Libra Association is a very well designed system with the right support, and it should work if it's allowed to, to thinking Libra Association has a very good chance of never becoming anything. Uh, <laughs> and one thing to note, Andreessen Horowitz's representative has been suggesting instead of the basket of currencies, maybe they peg Libra to the dollar because that would make it more acceptable to regulatory systems. Uh, but that takes away a lot of the viability uh, of the model. Uh, if they can get regulatory approval of this, it is, of course, possible that Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, Stripe, et cetera, join back up later. Uh, in which case this could could get restarted. But having the regulatory resistance they have and now not having the bank type places, the payment processors on board, uh, I think it looks unlikely to me. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far, but it's certainly more of an uphill challenge. And um, the, I mean, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines in about five minutes each day, subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com. Let's get into those Google announcements. Uh, their announcement was very interesting, very laid back. A lot of talk about concepts. Uh, Baratunde Thurston did some video snippets that they used to quite effect. And then they just kind of like sprinkle in details. Uh, it wasn't the, the typical like, here's our product, here's what it looks like, here's the specs, here's the price and release date. It was very interesting. Talked a lot about ambient computing and being helpful. Uh, for instance, at the very uh, beginning of the, the keynote, they just kind of threw out that Google Stadia launches November 19th and the Pixel will be the first phone to support it. And yeah, you can get the Founders Edition uh, for $130 in pre-order or uh, on launch November 19th. I this is such a low key way to announce the launch of a major product. It confirms again to me that this is a beta and uh, they don't want everyone rushing in. And this is, you know, when you launch a service like this, you want everyone to be talking about it. Uh, doing it like that is not going to be conducive to a lot of press. They also had a couple of hardware announcements that are coming uh, it, down the line, for instance, Pixel Buds, uh, the wireless earbuds, hands-free access, uh, long-range Bluetooth. They wouldn't give us an actual range, but it sounds like it's typical range of other Bluetooth, three rooms or a football field. Uh, come with a hook that stabilize them in the ear and keep them almost flush so they don't hang out like a lot of them do, especially the AirPods. Uh, volume dynamically adjusts to ambient noise. Beam forming mics uh, help pick up your voice better. They claim five hours of listening time on a charge, 24 hours with a charging case. Not come until spring of 2020 for 179 bucks. The Pixelbook Go laptop, however, is available soon. Uh, has a magnesium case in black and pink. Also has a grippable wavy bottom, 13 millimeters thick. Weighs two pounds with a claim 12 hour battery life and a quiet keyboard. Uh, Intel Core M3 i5 or i7 processors, eight or 16 gigs of RAM, 6428 and 256 solid state drives. You can get the black version for pre-order now with the pink coming soon. And each costs six hundred forty nine dollars. Really affordable Chrome OS laptop here. Yeah, I'm. I'll go back to the Pixel Buds for just a second. It's kind of incredible how much uh, 
the AirPods have influenced that, well, they have created this category and everyone, including myself, were laughing at them when they first announced them. But once we got our hands on the product, we realized how well designed they are and they've all danced around the design. But in the end, it seems every big company has a version of this, which is very similar to that product. Um, so that's that's something that continues to impress me. It's rare nowadays that Apple's define, <laughs> Apple defines a product category, so, but they did it there. Um, yeah, Pixelbook, I'm personally not a big Chrome OS user. So, mm, okay, yeah, a new one. Uh, Google also stressing that the Nest is their home brand with a lot of Nest announcements. The Nest Mini uh, used to be a Google Home Mini. Now it's called the Nest Mini. Uh, this new one has a third mic, so it picks up your voice better, comes with a wall mount. They've really improved the sound with software. They have, they say, two times stronger bass, but everybody who listened to it said, yeah, it's got better bass, it's got better sound. Uh, uses ultrasound to light up the controls when your hand is near, which is kind of nifty because there's not physical buttons. And also use that ultrasound to tune your audio to adapt to noise. The Nest Mini available for pre-order for 49 bucks, shipping October 22nd. Uh, Google also announced a program to migrate works with Nest devices to Google. Devices will need to pass a security review to migrate, but that's good news if you were worry works with nest was just going to get cut off looks like there's a path forward for some devices anyway uh, this will allow things like non-nest security systems to view and control your nest camera uh, or do things like have your lights flash red if the smoke alarm goes off uh, that's part of home routines which launches early next year uh, nest can also hear breaking glass or barking dogs why you'd want it to hear barking dogs in my house i would it would just be going off all the time but it can send you alert if you want <laughs> uh, it'll call the appropriate emergency dispatcher uh, if if you ask it to and the google home app will now have a feed of what's happening with your home devices in it. Uh, new Nest Aware whole home pricing. You won't pay by device anymore. One monthly rate for all your Nest devices, $6 per month uh, with a 30-day event history and $12 a month for the 60-day event history and 10-day video history. That's rolling out in early 2020. And the Nest Wi-Fi router and Wi-Fi point are the new mesh Wi-Fi products. Two times the speed and 25% better coverage than the previous Google Wi-Fi. Uh, one router and one point supposedly will cover about 85% of the homes in the U.S. Uh, settings are now in the Google Home app. They're kind of mushing everything into Google Home. The router contains Bluetooth low energy and thread support, so it can act as a smart home hub. And the Nest Point, the extender, has Google Assistant speaker and mic in it, so it can act like a Nest Mini. Available for pre-order now, shipping November 4th. A two-pack, which is just the router and the and one point, uh, $269, and a three-pack for $349. Bucks. At least clarity or some measure of it. Um, it's good that they are uh, kind of explaining to us what Nest is and what Google is and um, all of those categories that have become very confusing. I don't know how long that will last, but for now, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, this is the most focused that Nest and Google Home have felt in a while. All, all of these yeah. announcements felt like they were bringing it together rather than causing more confusion for once. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's that's good. And then, of course, the star of the show, the Pixel 4, uh, with the Project Soli radar motion sensing chip in it uh, called Motion Sense, uh, claims that that makes it the fastest face unlock because Motion Sense knows when you're moving towards your phone to pick it up. You can also wave over it to change tracks, uh, silence a call, interact with games. Motion Sense is processed on the phone and it's not shared with other services. Google made a lot of effort to talk about privacy today. The Titan M security chip in Pixel phones will let you delete your Google Assistant data by asking Google Assistant. Uh, also, Google Assistant has an on-device language model, so it doesn't have to go to the cloud for all your Google Assistant requests. Some can be done right there, so it never gets shared with the cloud. No one else ever sees it. Uh, six gigabytes of RAM. Uh, you can get 64 or 128 gigabytes of solid-state drive storage. There's the 5.7-inch screen on the Pixel 4 with a 2,800 milliamp-hour battery and a 6.3-inch screen on the Pixel 4 XL with a 3,700 milliamp-hour battery. A couple of the other features they mentioned, 
mentioned uh, the recorder app can now transcribe voice recordings in real time on the Pixel 4. That lets you search for things later and find parts of your recording. That's all done on the device. Uh, the OLED display has a 90 hertz refresh rate that will adjust automatically by activity to try to preserve battery life. You're also no longer getting Google Photos as part of a Pixel 4 purchase. Instead, you get three months of Google One 100 gigabyte storage. A lot of people upset about that. Let's talk about the camera. Uh, it's a square on the back that uses computational photography, a 2X telephoto lens that's hybrid optical digital, live HDR plus with some machine learning to approximate HDR plus in the viewfinder so that what you see is what you get. Dual exposure controls while you're composing a shot, brightness and shadow are the two controls. Some learning-based white balancing in all photo modes now. Uh, new portrait mode with computing depth from dual pixels and dual cameras, so you can do farther back portraits and large objects. They're working on fur. And then Night Sight brought an astrophotography mode, so you can capture the moon or a moonlit landscape. Uh, you can't do both at once yet, but they said a software update is coming that might increase the dynamic range close enough to do it. You can get the Pixel 4 in black, white, or orange, although they have, you know, funny Google names <laughs> for those. Uh, Pre-order starting at $799 for the 4, $899 for the XL, shipping October 24th on all major U.S. carriers. Now, a few more things to notice before I let you give your impression, Patrick. <laughs> no headphones included in the box. You can't get the Pixel Buds yet, but there's no headphones in this box, no adapter in the box. You do get a $100 Google Store credit when you buy one, so presumably you could buy some wired headphones, but that seems annoying. Uh, the Motion Sense chip uses a 60 gigahertz ISM band, which is not allowed for commercial use in India. So Pixel 4 not coming to India. And Google confirmed to The Verge that the Pixel 4 will not support the Daydream VR platform, and Google mm. will no longer be selling the Daydream View mobile headset. A spokesperson told The Verge that usage has been declining and added asking people to put their phone in a headset and lose access to the apps they use throughout the day causes immense friction. So my read there is that Google is pivoting to create a standalone virtual reality headset a la the Oculus Go, and we may see that in the next year or two. There's a lot in there, but I think the most interesting one is uh, Soli, or how they're motion calling it, sense. marketing one, Motion Sense. There you go. I'm not sure what to think about it. Um, it seems gimmicky, and, and this kind of thing has been tried before and hasn't really caught on. But of course, it might not have been as uh, uh, polished as this could be. I think in the end, of course, we'll have hands on and people will tell us and we will try ourselves to see if it's good. I think it might still be gimmicky. I feel like it it's too context specific and the uses, the use cases will be uh, relatively limited. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I Tom? agree with you. It feels like a thing that is going to look cool when you show it off, but is not yet to the point that you'll use it a lot. Uh, really? and, and I'm not saying it won't get there, but this is this is the first gen introducing the concept. Whether they'll start to find uses, get more apps on board with it, that that will be seen over the next year, I think. I mean, just the the fact that essentially the phone has to be not lying, it doesn't have to be lying flat, but the only times when you're not having it in your hand is going to be when it's lying flat. And if you have it in one hand, I suspect you touch the screen. You don't start yeah, waving so, your hand around. I mean, I guess you could, but it's not as advantageous. You could, yeah. As that. yeah, yeah. So that alone makes it uh, a little bit iffy on my, on my, uh, for me. Uh, everything else seems great. Great updates to the Pixel phone. The photography uh, aspects are interesting, but not incredible. The you know 90 hertz OLED display is pretty cool, but again, not amazing. Um, yeah, it's it's cool. It's, it's a solid phone Pixel and it's phone. priced appropriately, yeah. I think. It's seven hundred forty nine dollars. Yeah. It's cheaper than most major flagship phones. Uh, and it's it's a good solid phone. So this is not going to win the war for the for for Google uh, by any stretch, but it's going to keep them in the fight. Indeed. Uh, I bought one, so I'll be letting you know uh, how it goes once I get it. How Thanks. much uh, Project Solly you use on the Yeah, daily yeah, basis. exactly. Thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com and join in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. Uh, shout out to patrons at our master and grandmaster levels, including Mike McLaughlin, Philip Less, Frederick Hubner. Thank you for your support. And thank you, Patrick Beja, for being on the show. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure.
Do you have anything going on uh, to let folks know about? New launches, anything? Um, I guess if, if you're French, you can always check out Le Rendez-vous Tech or Le Rendez-vous Jeu if you like uh, tech or gaming. And if you speak English, go check out the Phileas Club, which is uh, the last episode we had uh, English, an Englishman, a Scot, and an Irish person, and they talked about Brexit. One of them was a pro-Brexit uh, voter, and we had, would you imagine it, a civil conversation. Yeah. And uh, it's possible. So I, I like that, that you out. had uh, an Irish European because uh, the high Irish border is huge for that. I like that you had a non-Irish European yourself, and then you had a Remainer and a Lever. And it, it seemed, <laughs> seemed very well balanced. I really enjoyed that conversation. Yeah, it was fun. Um, you can get the name of the show at frenchspin.com if you don't find it easily on your podcast app. The Phileas Club. Real quickly, Len Peralta's year-end DTNS art poster is revealed, uh, including a very large, looming emperor-like Roger Chang while Sarah and I fight. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's very Star Wars-inspired, and you could have your name on it in the credits area. Order now, and it will happen. Only 30 spots available, so go to lenperaltastore.com for that. Uh, also, we have new Patreon rewards. If you become a member of DTNS and get a peek at our show rundown, you can watch as we develop it behind the scenes. Uh, also, November 1st, everybody who is at the $2 level or above gets a PDF copy of the DTNS cookbook with recipes from us, some listeners. So get over there right now. Make sure you're at the $2 level and sign up at patreon.com slash DTNS. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with Scott Johnson. Talk to you then. Bye. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>